Hello, my name is Joel Christ. I'm a developer with Acona Systems, and today I'm going to be doing a walk through the process of creating custom enterprise search web parts in SharePoint Server 2007. Today I'm going to be using Microsoft Visual Studio 2005 to create a web part that's going to allow us to work with the enterprise search features available with SharePoint Server. So the first thing I'm going to do is come in here and create a new project. We're going to do it in C Sharp. We're going to create a web control library. We're going to name it custom search web parts. Say OK. And Visual Studio generates the project for us. Now the first thing I'm going to do is come in here in Solution Explorer and change the name of my source code file here to author search web parts. OK, now we need to add several references to enable our web part to work with the search features in SharePoint. So the first thing we're going to do is come in here and choose to add a reference. We're going to add references to the necessary Office and SharePoint assemblies. Now I'm running Visual Studio today on a machine that's not running SharePoint Server. So what I've done is I pulled down local copies of the necessary SharePoint and Office assemblies right here and I can select them by browsing for them and then add them to the add, them, add the references to the project that way. Now I also need to add references to system.data and system.xml. So I'm going to come in here and say add reference and get those off the .NET tab. System.data and system.xml and say OK. So now we have all of our necessary references set up. Now the next thing I'm going to do is add some using statements to pull in some namespaces. Um, doing this so that I can use the classes and, and types within these namespaces without having to use the qualified, fully qualified namespace paths. Um, and then we're going to now replace the Visual Studio generated class definition with our own. Okay, I'm going to grab the class definition. All right, let's take a look at what we're doing here. We've changed the class now to inherit from and be derived from the web part, SharePoint web part, web part pages, web part class. And then the code comes along and declares um, variables for the different controls that we're going to display in the interface of our web part. We're going to have a button, a text box, level control, and the data grid. So what our web part is going to allow users to do is to enter in the name of an author that they want to search for items created by um, that author. And then when they click on the button, we're going to go out and interact with the search features in SharePoint um, to return the list of items that were authored by the specified author and display the results in a data grid. So the first thing the code does is we overwrite create child controls and we create and add the controls that make up our user interface. And then we come down here and we have now a button click handler that we wire up up here. Here's our button click handler right here implementation. And what we do in here is we get the query text, in this case here, an author's name. And then we go ahead and call our keyword query execute helper function, which is right down here. And so we create a keyword query object here, um, specifying server context dot current. Um, and then we go ahead and build a query string, author colon, and then our query text that we got off of the text box on our user interface. Specify that we want to return only relevant results. And we execute the query by calling the execute method of our keyword query object here. And then we come down here, and if we had results, we go ahead then and call our helper function, um, read result table down here. Read result table then takes the result table that was returned to us as a result of the query and goes ahead and fills up and adds the results to the data grid by calling our helper function here, fill results grid. So it goes ahead and sets the properties on the data grid, turns off the auto generate for the columns so the data grid doesn't automatically um, bind to all of the columns in the search results set. And then we just go ahead and choose which columns we want to display the title, the path, and the author columns. Do a data bind then on the grid, and then add the grid to our control collection on our form. So at this point here, we should be able to go ahead and build. And it looks like the build succeeded just fine. Now that we've successfully built our web part, the next step is to deploy it to the server. So the first thing I'm going to do is to create a description file or DWP file for the web part. And I've gone ahead and done that. 
custom search web part DWP is open. Um, we specify the assembly information, the name of the assembly, the version, no public key token, we're not strong name signing this, um, a type name, which is our namespace dot class name, and then a title to describe um, our web part. And ultimately, we're going to use that then to add our innocence of our web part to a page on our SharePoint site. The next thing we need to do is to modify the web.config file on the site to specify that our type is, is a safe type or whether that our controller web part is a safe control. So I've gone ahead and done that as well. I'm opening now the web.config file on the server for the site. And I have a safe control entry in here for custom search web parts, specifying that the namespace and all types within that namespace are safe. And then the last step is to deploy the assembly to the server. Now I'm locating it. I've gone ahead and copied an instance of my custom search web parts DLL assembly up into the underscore app underscore bin folder um, for the site that I want to deploy the web part to, which in this case here is just my default site. Now I've gone ahead and reset Internet Information Services as well so that the changes will be picked up and my web part should now be available to be tested with. So I'm going to switch over to my SharePoint site and I'm going to come in here and I'm going to choose to go to Site Settings and under the Galleries I'm going to go to the Web Part Gallery and I'm going to choose to add now my web part to the gallery. Okay, so I just select the DWP file we were just looking at. That looks fine. Good description. So we've got our title and our description. I'm going to place it in the default web parts group, default quick add groups. Say OK. Okay, so at this point here now we should be ready to go ahead and add our web part to a page. So I'm going to go ahead and go over here to the search center. I'm going to choose to create a new page. The title, we're going to specify a test page for a custom search web part. We're going to pick a welcome page, search page. Say create. Okay, so now at this point here, we've got our test page created. Go ahead and choose to add a web part. Come down here and expand the all web parts. And then look under the default web parts. I see my custom search web part available. Go ahead and select it. Okay, and now we get our web part added here. We can type in a username. Administrator. Let's say start search. And we get back all of the items that were authored by administrator in this case here, which is everything on the site. So it looks like the search web part is working correctly. So by using Microsoft Visual Studio, we were able to author a web part that we were able to build and deploy to our SharePoint server site that allowed us to interact with the search features, enterprise search features available with SharePoint services to allow us to perform a search for all items authored by a particular user.